Hello, and thank you for joining this OncLive peer exchange titled Evolving Treatment Paradigms for Renal Cell Carcinoma. The standard of care for patients with metastatic renal cell carcinoma continues to change rapidly as novel therapies and combinations have gained recent FDA approval. The busy oncologist treating a patient with metastatic disease now has a plethora of choices for both newly diagnosed and relapsed kidney cancer. In this OncLive peer exchange, my colleagues and I will look at the challenges in finding the right systemic treatment for the right patient. We'll talk about the data from ASCO 2018 annual meeting and how it relates to the treatment of advanced disease. I'm Dr. Daniel George, and I serve as Director of Gender Urinary Oncology at the Duke Cancer Institute in Durham, North Carolina. Participating today on our distinguished panel is Dr. Robert Armato, Professor and Chair of Oncology at UT Health McGovern Medical School and Chief of the Division of Oncology at the Memorial Hermann Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. And Dr. Tony Shuari, the Lang Center for Gender Urinary Oncology at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute and Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. Dr. Richard Joseph, an Assistant Professor of Oncology, Division of Hematology Oncology at the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida. And finally, Dr. Walter Sadler, Chief of, Professor and Chief of Hematology Oncology in the Department of Medicine at the University of Chicago in Chicago, Illinois. Thank you so much for joining us. So let's begin. So starting out, gentlemen, with metastatic, newly diagnosed metastatic renal cell carcinoma, there have been a couple of new approvals this past year now for the treatment. Tony, do you want to walk us through cabozantinib and the cabosun data and, and what, how that's kind of led to its new approval? Absolutely, Dan. So um, uh, we launched with Alliance and uh, National Cancer Institute, you are part of this, a randomized phase two to ask the question whether cabozantinib is superior to sunitinib, a long-standing standard of care in renal cell carcinoma. Premise that cabozantinib target VEGF receptor and other you know, receptors involved in resistance to VEGF inhibitor. We focus on an intermediate and poor population with the primary endpoint uh, of PFS, progression-free survival was met, both by investigator assessment and independent review, and based on that, cabozantinib was approved by the FDA as an option for untreated patients. Great, and that approval, uh, talk a little bit about that approval, because it's a little bit broader than what the actual study looked at. Correct, and we see that approval different sometimes from the FDA to the European agencies. It was approved on all risk groups, despite the evidence the Cabosan data did not include patients with good risk, uh, and essentially these patients were clear cell component. There is emerging data in patients with non-clear cell component, and I think though uh, the train, you know, have left the station because cabozantinib is being now um, you know, explored in combination uh, with other drug, including immune checkpoint inhibitor, like our planned study, again, from Alliance, the pedigree study. We're going to get to that. But, Walt, uh, I want you to weigh in here now. Does the Cabosun data and the new approval of Cabozantinib, does that change your practice in frontline metastatic RCC? Uh, I, I think it does a little bit. I think that um, it becomes, for me, another option. Um, I think, though, that we have to recognize that this was a randomized phase two study with a progression-free survival as an endpoint and not an overall survival endpoint. And so we see some, Im some improvements in progression-free survival. Whether that actually translates into overall survival, I think, is uh, unknown. Um, it is a reasonable intermediate endpoint, en intermediate endpoint, but not a perfect intermediate endpoint. And I think I have a little bit of a concern with the broad approval for all uh, prognostic groups because this um, trial did not include patients with good prognosis disease. And we do have to keep in mind issues of toxicity where we have, for example, a trial that compared, you know, pazopinib versus sunitinib in which there was an improvement in uh, tolerability in the pazopinib group across a broader range of patients. Fair enough. Efficacy versus tolerability, it's a balance, right? And Correct. we're going to weigh Correct. both of those, particularly depending on the patient population we're looking at. And we're going to get into patient selection in a little bit. Any thought, Rich, from your perspective on, you know, and I know that you're, you're newer to the field with this, uh, in this field, but, but fr sometimes fresh eyes give a new perspective. What are your thoughts on Cabo Sun and, and have you used that in the frontline setting? Yeah, thanks. Um, I, I think cabozantinib is a very great drug. I think beating out sunitinib with PFS at least shows us that it has 
at least equivalent, if not better, ap uh, activity in those groups of patients. I do agree with Walt that the toxicity for me in my hands does seem to be uh, a bit worse, especially at the initial dose of 60 milligrams. Um, I tend to start patients at a lower uh, dose. And I think it's certainly, you know, building off of that from the COMPARE study, uh, probably is more toxic than Votrian as well.